The theme this week in visual politics was natural versus unnatural. The photos of that unpronounceable volcano in Iceland, which strangely erupted right before Earth Day and shut down air traffic in Europe, were surreal. Take this apocalyptic shot of a farmer in her car out looking for lost cattle, for example. One reader wrote, I'm shunting it aside as too dramatic. Or take this incredible shot of a dust cloud. Is it a denial instinct that made me think, as I tweeted, it's straight out of a Hitchcock movie? Then, there were all the pictures of the oil rig explosion in the Gulf, occurring rather strangely again one week after Obama's offshore drilling proposal. Northwestern communications professor and BAG contributor Bob Harriman explained that this photo, at first, seems to minimize the disaster and turn it into art. But then, it also makes us realize that nature is a lot bigger than we are and demands we take care of it. The largest political story of the week, though, was President Obama's speech last Friday in New York, calling Wall Street on the carpet yet again. Most media eyes were trained on Goldman Sachs Chairman Lloyd Blankfein, who has suddenly emerged as the face of Wall Street and the mortgage meltdown. It felt, in day after day of Blankfein portraits, both in New York and then in his grilling on Capitol Hill, that Wall Street reform has come down to a one-on-one -on -one contest between Blankfein and Obama. Take a look at this photo by Bag News contributor Tim Fadick of Blankfein and the chief risk officer of J.P. Morgan Chase before the Obama speech, exhibiting all the hubris and entitlement in the world. Blankfein's expression and how he presents to the camera is like a living defense. It says to the country, we're not going to crack. And even though Congress tried to make a pinata out of him, the look mostly held together this week. The theme of natural versus unnatural didn't stop there, however. New York Magazine cut right to the chase, putting Sarah Palin on its cover as a floating head and riffing on the FedEx logo with the words Palin Inc. to emphasize how Palin has become a carefully packaged brand. In my mind, though, the message of the cover is really a larger political commentary extending beyond Palin to Obama and almost everybody else as well. Statesman.com's John Kelso took a similar tact reacting to Newsweek's Rick Perry cover saying how everything about the photo, such as no Texas flag, no gun, no string tie, no hat, exposes Perry as a poser and, quoting Sarah Palin, someone who looks Wall Streety. Finally, the visual media didn't do Obama any favors either as he launched his White House to Main Street tour in Iowa, hoping to contrast some down-home photo ops with the bankers testifying on Capitol Hill and the GOP stonewalling banking reform. This photo failed to oblige Obama a supposedly intimate moment with an organic farmer, instead showing the whole stage set, including a photographer and a field full of Secret Service agents. So, what can we look forward to next week? I imagine the nature theme sticking around a while, if you'll pardon the pun, especially if that oil slick hits what the AP caption labels, the pristine sandy shores of Gulfport.